put tastes different, how much more the other things that we are probably not looking deeply into. So that is one of my personal goals of helping people develop more um, or, or helping people learn more about coffee differences, coffee tastes, and how one process might make a lot of difference. Okay? So, my name is my name is Ralph, and this is Carl. He will be assisting me in terms of guiding you through the cupping. Okay? So, please expect to move around. Please expect to um, try to, what do they call that? Participate. Participate. Yeah, let's do that. Okay? And I expect that from you guys. Yeah, great, great. Okay. Um, what we do with the, what, the, the first the process, the first process of cupping coffee is to, to first and foremost observe the roast. Okay. As you may notice, um, the roast profile per coffee is different from the other. Okay. And also, uh, we'll be touching on coffees from Benbet, Apo, Sagada. And um, Ralph, let me yes. just ask you, why do you guys uh, store your uh, coffee beans in the highlands? Like, can you not uh, grow coffee yeah. in the lowlands? Um, well, technically you can. It's just that uh, there are three main types of coffee varieties. Uh, maybe some of you already know it, but. Let me just try to explain a bit. Uh, first, Arabica, that is what we call the, the premium kind of coffee. It's premium because it has different, it has different kind of flavor to it. Okay? And part of that is because it's grown on a higher elevation. So it's about 1,800 to 1,200 meters above sea level. Okay? And what, what it does to the coffee is it, it creates a more pronounced flavor to it. Whereas the other two varieties, which can be grown on lowlands, such as Liberica and Robusta, you can see that already in Batangas, which we call Balaco, that's Liberica. Uh, we also have one in Cavite, which are what we call Robusta. Okay? And these are grown lowlands. Now, the problem with that, that, well, it's not really a problem. It's just that when coffee is grown on a lower elevation, what it does is, because the coffee is very, um, very susceptible to pests, uh, very susceptible, it is parang meticulous siya alagaan. Okay? Now, growing it on a lower elevation would make the coffee susceptible to more pests. So what it does, in order for it to survive, it has to develop a defense mechanism which now elevates um, chemically the caffeine content of it. So in terms of caffeine, which might somewhat lead to bitterness, you will notice that Robusta in Liberica might taste a little bit more bitter than Arabica. Well, that is not exactly because of the caffeine, but, it, but somewhat it elevates the caffeine content. Okay? So para nangyayari, the caffeine content becomes a defense mechanism of the coffee para hindi sila agad-agad mamatay on a lower land. Ngayon, pag mas mataas yung elevation mo, well, it's still susceptible to pests, but it doesn't need require a lot of self-mechanism or defense mechanism from them. That's why, as I as I mentioned a while ago, it has a lot more sweetness to it because the caffeine doesn't overpower the sweetness that it's supposed to have. So much better if you grow it on low level. Because it tends to have a higher caffeine content. Okay. All right. Sounds fair. Sounds fair. Okay. Um, by the way, if you guys have any questions, um, please do let us know. Uh, we also don't want to miscommunicate what we're trying to teach here, especially if it goes out in the, you know, the full white world. Okay, um, so what we do first is we observe the rose. You guys can actually come over and just try to observe because later on, um, especially when we get to the part when we smell the beans, Taste that grows. We'll now try to equate that to our observations that we have actually made. So, if you guys might notice, if the beans from your left would tend to be lighter, going darker. 
Okay? So just following that thought, later on when you try to taste the needles, you'll try to realize that, oh, the dark rose is this kind of, this, this tastes like this, and the light like this, like that, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, okay? So after observing the rose of color, we now go to the, um, uh, the, the ground. This is where we smell the ground. So, Carl will show you uh, what we normally do in terms of smelling. So, first, of course, you bring a cut to your nose, try to shake it a bit so that it releases the, it releases the paper. And I just like to try to smell it and observe. Um, does it remind you of something? Does it remind you of Christmas? Does it remind you of personal? Ah, okay. We normally get that now. Marami ata ang painters of our evening. But then again, if kailangan na matapang siya, yung kaya kang sabag-laban. Diba? Okay. So, I hope you don't, you don't, you don't mix it up. So, you can be more objective. But yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Try to, try to observe. Uh, yung smell niya, in my assumption, would be different to that. Although, I don't want to color your uh, just go ahead. Okay. Okay. Normally, uh, cupping is done actually by the roasters. Okay. Yung kung umaabot sa atin ang cupping is more about tasting na lang. Okay. Kasi nangyayari, uh, they had to cup what they roast. roast. So they would know if they have to increase the temperature, they have to, you know, parang they are making the recipe out of it. Now, ang ginagawa, ang pinaka uh, byproduct na lang ng cupping na ginagawa natin is to just know the nuances and the differences of one coffee from the other. If you notice, uh, we are using the same kinds of bowl, and uh, to tell you to tell you the truth, that's la uh, measured. Every, everything is measured so that we are sure, or we can be more objective in terms of judging this coffee from the other because everything is almost the same. The kettle is the temperature of the kettle is also regulated, so everything. These are actually the official um, equipments that we are using. So, so ang advantage niya is same sa lahat ng measurement. Yeah. Okay. Para, mas objective. And if you also notice the way Carl is pouring the water is uh, on a circular motion, just to make sure that every ground is wet. The temperature of the water again, Ralph. Okay, so right now we're using 90, 91, 90. ah, 92. Okay. 92. So it's not boiling point. Not, not boiling point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something I also want to talk about, especially when we're brewing coffee. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of our ancestors would be very angry if we don't use boiling water, but that is something somewhat um, primitive. Okay. Now, what happens is Siyempre, when you boil something, or you cook something on a boiling point, um, it gets cooked very easily. And especially with coffee, since it's very delicate, once, I mean, if you didn't control it in as much as you would want to, may hindi sunog lang siya yung lasa niya. And, um, think of it this way. Uh, because you, you hasten the process of cooking the coffee, you lose out on the possible that you can taste. Okay? Because it's not a good thing, or in short, it's not a good thing. But if you take it um, slowly, one step at a time, you get to enjoy a lot of things. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Totally. You start with holding hands. You don't, you know, go ahead and. Yeah. 
Okay, so now... Okay, so it's okay. Let's just wait for it to cool a bit. Maybe... Do you guys have any questions so far? Do you have any questions? Like... As you can see, so what's going on there, we can see the um, locations where our um, coffee beans was planted and cultivated. And we have uh, one in Sagada, Pepe, Kitaklan, Mount Abo, and of course, one of And then, you need to your name of our coffee beans. So are you guys familiar with all of the locations? Yes, but for yeah. those are that. Ah, Mera, Mera. Mera, Mera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, actually, you know. Must better by yan. Um, sa ngayon, dahil na uso yung palabas na, ano yun? That thing called Potan. Papait na papait yung mga lumalabas na siya. Okay? Pero surprisingly, Sir Sagada is actually one of the favorites. So far in the store. I'm not sure if it's because of the movie or her. But it's more like a kind of like, whereas for example, maybe Kitaklat. Are you guys familiar with where Kitaklat is? Or Matuto. Okay. Those are actually very good coffee too. But I guess the Sagada is more popular than that. So it's more. But but so through this, through coffee appreciation, we get to um, give a uh, uh, share the experience to the customers now. Hey, do you know there's a place called Matuto? Or there's a place called Kitanga? Okay. So now, what the time Okay. So now, um, I'd like to invite you to get a spoon, and now we'll still on the smelling part. Okay. So, Carl will be showing you or doing the demo of how we normally smell the coffee. We're, we're gonna use a spoon to smell Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, basically, just to release the aroma of it. Okay. So, what we do is we push back the, what we call the crust. If you can see it on the top, it's a little coffee ground. Push it back once, swirl it, and then it releases the aroma of it. Okay, so I'd invite you, I'd like to invite you for everyone who wants to try it. So it's very easy. You push it back, you swirl it, and then you smell it. Easy. Okay, so, okay, uh, sorry, but before we do that, um, remember, um, following the thought that this coffee is different from the other, please make sure that you rinse it first. You tap it and then you move on to the next. Just so it doesn't contaminate. It's so meticulous. But I'm going to tell you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really okay. scientific. Alright. Okay, let us try. Who else wants to try? We have lots of stuff over there. Sino yung nag-harvest? Sino yung nag-harvest? 
Malawi Conscious. Kasi, <laughs> nagawa sa atin na yun. Agay yeah, tayo. Yes. Uh, if you got in your school a while ago, you can use it again. But if you not, you can just get set. Okay? So, what do you do? You get a sample. Konti lang. And then, you slurp it. Okay? Okay? So, ganun talaga yun. Hindi lang, hindi naman siya okay. Hindi yun po. It's the process. Why is that important? Okay? When you slurp this in, you incorporate more air to the liquid. Now, by that incorporation, it releases the flavor. Okay? So, what are the things that we look for? What what are the things that we are looking for in terms of tasting? We look for, siyempre, unang muna yung flavor. Okay? So, hindi napapasok yung you know, okay? intensity of the flavor. Okay? And then we look for the body. And when we talk about the body, we're talking about the mouth feel. Does it feel light? Does it feel heavy? Parang ano lang yun eh. Uh, does it feel creamy? Okay? Parang if we see pinu siya, pwede siya cough syrup or water or milk. Okay? So, meron ba siyang karakteristik? You know? Lastly, is we look for the aftertaste. Does it leave a good aftertaste or pleasant pa siya or talagang wow, mabait pa lang na nakakainis, di ba? So, yung mga ganun bagay, okay? So, if you are adventurous enough and if you're not healthy enough, we encourage you to try it. And I think you're a gentleman to taste. You know, we are going to give out something, you know, to those who will participate. Wow. Sige, we're coming. Content sheet para sa inyo. So if you would want to participate, sige. Si Miss Pauline yata would like to participate from the daily interview. Okay, hi Miss Pauline. Which one would you like to taste? Wala ko sa gada yan. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. She's gonna taste the sa gada. Alright. Let's also call in who else? Matt? <laughs> Mom Chan, yeah. Mom Chan, can you hear? When you get to UP Town Center, go to the cinema, cinema area. Right. Cinema Lab. Cinema Lab. Cinema Lab. 